This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasts with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 287 on Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, with you uh, for some awesomeness, some uh, tech gadgetry and uh, discussion here with a great, great, great panel representing here in Pittsburgh, PA, in, uh, in the Mayhem studio. And most of them are jam-packed right here in the studio. There they all are, right there on your left, if you're with us on the video. We're doing a hand mic and everything, and he's not even on the couch. We've, we've, we've outgrown it. Chilla. I can't even fit in the, in the frame. <laughs> Get in the frame! Get in the frame, Chilla! How you doing, man? Pretty good. How are you? All right. Uh, sorry, we kind of jumbled you around there. <laughs> this is the most uncomfortable headphones I've ever worn. Oh, no. <laughs> They're not made for your head. I'm so these, sorry. These are, these are getting a, a negative three on the wire cover. <laughs> <laughs> also with us, they're Behringers. Uh, also with us is uh, uh, Katie Dudas at Dudders on the Twitter. Social media peeps over at the Scarehouse. What's up? Yes. Homies. And Sidekick Media Services, of yeah, course. Definitely. And also with us, oh, is that a fuzzy? Is <laughs> hey. that? Hey, Frank should know with at Fuzzwad on the uh, on the on the Internet, on the Twitters as well. Uh, he is our resident engineer, actually. Yep. Right. Uh, but it, it's a specific engineer. I mechanical. Just, mechanical. Mechanical engineer. I just just, you know, uh, you know, smarter than me is all I hear when I hear engineer. Uh, <laughs> I, I, they they, they uh. run in the family. So, you know. Uh, but anyways, and oh, hey, we we got a very special guest with us on the line. It's Mike Fedor of Mike Fedor Show on the Twitters, and uh, also a frequenter of the of the podcasts and everything, and, and and doing things online as well. One of our Patreon supporters joining us here. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing well tonight. Thank you very much for having me on the show. It looks like you have way more comfortable headphones than Chilla right now. <laughs> Uh, just about, yeah. These are uh, actually gaming headsets. So, yeah. Awesome. They awesome. still work for this. Perfect, perfect. But uh, we'll get into our awesome things and so much good stuff here. Uh, please check out the show at awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, on uh, on, on Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, YouTube, Facebook, all the videos on Facebook these days. And uh, there's a lot of you guys lis uh, listening and watching on there as well, uh, with this and the other shows that we're doing here in Sogatron Media. And uh, you can drop us a line at awesomecast on the Twitter. Uh, look up awesomecast, a great Facebook group over there as well. And you can drop us a line at awesomecast at Sorgatron Media dot com and we're live here every tuesday night uh we're at least uh, shaking butts in the camera around 6 30 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com and everybody can join us in the chat room just like riz uh lady missy is joining us with the show notes and helping out um did i say riz i met wheels i did that again man juggalo john with us and of course fuzzy's in there as well hanging out with the chatters and also you can check out a replay check out our friends at rivers edge pgh.com uh, we're streaming over there thursdays at 8 a.m after funny money that's 8 a.m eastern if you're not in the pittsburgh area but it's very pittsburgh based uh and we recommend uh check them out also thank to our patreons of course this will see business development and mike fedor that's joining us right now thank thank you mike everybody say thank you mike thank, thank you, you mike, thank you, mike. <laughs> <laughs> one of our great, one of our great um, um, executive producers here on the show, and so glad he could join us and be part of the panel. So uh, let's get into our awesome things of the week. And uh, you know what? Uh, since he's the Patreon support, I think we're going to let Mike go first, if you don't mind, Mike. All right. The awesomest story of the uh, week that I saw was uh, pretty cool. That uh, actually, you know, my area of expertise is more sports oriented like that and uh when i saw this uh, story come up on twitter i thought oh all right let's uh, talk about this now i've always uh, said time and time again that uh, i am so appreciative of the way the internet can bridge the uh distance gap between cultures and communities and like i've had uh, friends that you know i i know i would never have the chance to speak to if you know, the internet weren't around. So uh, uh, now uh, this story uh, uh, comes to us uh, from the uh, uh, minor leagues, I guess you can say. Uh, I found a uh, blog talking about uh, the, uh, I guess you uh, guys haven't heard of the, uh, was it the, 
Oh yeah, the Fresno Grizzlies. I got there. You know, a uh, Southern California, I guess Fresno, Southern California, uh, baseball minor league baseball team, and uh, they ran a promotion recently uh, called, uh, I, I guess, saluting all the uh, uh, the. Tex-Mex heritage down there in uh, Southern California. And for one day, they renamed their team the uh, Fresno Tacos. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, I guess I, I, if I get, I see the link up there. I guess you can see some uh, pictures like that. They uh, made all these uh, really cool uh, looking, um, uh, you know, new uniforms. They put like a taco logo on their hat and stuff like that. And uh, apparently uh, somebody from uh, all the way up in Canada, uh, his name was uh, Damien Ford, like that, uh, tried to contact them and said, um, hey, I love this idea, guys. This is a, a great idea. Uh, I really, really, really want one of those uh, ball caps with a taco on it. Uh, but there's one problem. I live in Canada. So, uh, of course, the story goes through uh, a couple of times where he's, I wouldn't say badgering him, but, uh, you know, like he's being persistent about him. Like I said, hey, uh, Fresno Grizzlies, do you, uh, do you think maybe I can send you some Canadian put in? And mm -hmm. uh, that's that, you know, the fries covered in the uh, uh, cheese and uh, curds and gravy, to, uh, to stuff like that. And, um, so uh, he's uh, so persistent, persistent, like it, and, uh, and eventually uh, uh, gets down to uh, like, OK, uh, the Fresno uh, Grizzlies write him back on Twitter and goes, deal. OK, uh, so they uh, send him uh, a uh, not only uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the ingredients for the poutine and uh, that were uh, like really from according to this uh, blog article, it's, it's like the really, really high end. Uh, type of uh, uh, stuff from the, you know, different gravies and cheeses and everything like that. And then after uh, time passed, the uh, uh, minor league uh, Fresno Grizzlies contacted him and said, okay, well, uh, what's your hat size and what's your jersey size? And then at the uh, bottom of the article, it says uh, uh, that they sent him not only a uh, – a uh, ball cap with uh, it's got you know him in full gear like that. It's uh, they, he's got a tacos uh, uh, jersey on as well as a uh, cap, and so and they even sent him out this uh, I guess a bonus uh, uh, grizzly bear uh, looking look bobblehead thing like that from another promotion like that. So uh, like that, it, it seems like a really uh, uh, nice story that uh, that uh, these two. Uh, I guess communities from Southern California uh, and uh, up in Canada, like that, they uh, were able to uh, get back and forth and, and do this cold, great cultural exchange between uh, you know, Canada and uh, uh, Southern California, and, uh, and they, they, I guess, they make the best friends. And so That's I, awesome. I thought that was uh, really uh, that was a really awesome story. That. Uh, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, I want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome social media story. Go check that out. Uh, we'll, we'll kick the link out there on the on the Twitters as well. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Katie. Hi. Um, what is your awesome thing of the week? I don't remember who I was talking to, but at some point someone had asked me, uh, I follow Gary V. Gary V on Snapchat has these awesome Gary V personalized... <laughs> Gee, I wonder who that was. Yep. Um, <laughs> anybody who loves Gary Vee, talk to me. Um, but uh, they, it's it, uh, and it's very process you use one of their um they actually have templates that you can use so you could use this for a specific event like if you're oh my gosh this is gonna be huge for weddings <laughs> is what i'm the first thing i'm thinking of and it's gonna be massive you know oh look it's you know some sort of hashtag of the married couple's name like meshing together or something and um you can design your own geo filter and you select the area it goes in 
And uh, the one they selected was for about, a, I believe, a month, and it was $200, which is pretty reasonable. It's not bad. If you're a company or yeah. something. Yeah. And they said it took about five minutes to get everything up and running. And uh, now anybody in their area, their little area that they set up, uh, was, what, 2,100 square feet? Yeah. Oh, wow. And it actually, like, pulls up a tool or from 21,000, sorry. Yeah. Uh, that, that, so, so the geo filter, like, works around that. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Wait for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for five. and you get a little update. That's great. Yes, yeah, so this is this is really cool. I'm really like, for example, I work for Scarehouse, and this will be awesome. And, and you know, for the months that we're open, mm -hmm. to be able to have people tag their photos that they're here, you know, have some fun with some filters. That's <laughs> perfect. Or even seeing like you know around Pot Camp Pittsburgh or mm -hmm. any other event that that you do around the area. Uh, it'd be great to have one for Podcast Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know. So, uh, so is it is it mostly like for an area, or like can I do one for like, hey, it's a national, you know, whatever day? No, it's it's just their specific geo area. So, it, so they just the geo stuff. Yeah, and I'm sure in the larger you make the area, the more it's going to cost it's, you. It's going to be expensive, so it's cost. So there you go. That's how they're going to make money. Yeah, because oh, it's, it's been... you know they were trying to figure out how to monetize this thing, and this is a great revenue stream because like I said, 200 bucks is not bad at all. No. No, and, yeah. on a company. I mean, as far as like us doing it, no, yeah, it's I mean, a little prohibitive. Wise, it's yeah. not, I yeah. mean, personally, I, I don't, I mean, I'm not Gary Vee, obviously, but <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be fun. You know, I'm going to go home and make one of my cat, of course. And when mm -hmm. you come to my house, you can Snapchat yourself with my cat, no matter where she's at. So there's no function for like just a regular user to make one without paying, like for their own photos no. or something like that. So no, that's interesting. Yeah, the only ones that you can, they're called geo filters at this right, point. Right, right. And um, they're just specific areas. And maybe eventually guess, we might be able to. I mean, who knows? Maybe someone like Gary Vee has some sort of Whoop. <laughs> I got it. Is that you? Yeah. Okay. Like, All right. Oh, okay. oh. We'll just go ahead and turn that guy down. Okay. Well, that gets fixed. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so checking it out. Uh, yeah, I saw this kind of come around, come off the, over the wire today. And I, I kind of wondered about it. And again, it was kind of our discussion. I'm sure like a Gary Vee had like advanced kind of access to something like this. Right. Oh my so, you know, of course, you know, it'd be. I don't know if he invests in Snapchat or not, too. That would I would be curious about that because there's a lot of them that he does. Yeah. So mm -hmm. awesome, uh, Fuzzy. What is your uh, awesome thing? My awesome thing is the Audi Virtual Reality Experience. Ooh, I saw this like around like recently. Uh, but uh, yeah, you tell me about this. You're of course, like uh, you're a Mr. Audi. Let, yes. Let's be honest. Yes. You're, you're I'm like an Audi fanatic. I run the social oh, yeah. media for the Audi Club of uh, Western Pennsylvania. Um, basically, you tell me what chassis code you have, and I can tell you the different engine options and all different kinds of fun tidbits like that, and how it does on do track a, and whatnot. Do they have a cardboard app as well? Uh, not sure if they have a cardboard app yet. Need hmm. to look into that. Def definitely something worthwhile because then you know you have the your Audi branded cardboard that you can take home from the dealer. There you mm. go. It's good marketing. It is good marketing, but it looks like they give you a little bit more than that for this, right? Yeah. So what they do, you go to the dealer and uh, they set you up with a set of uh, Bang and Olafs and headphones, and also an HT HTC uh, Vive or oh, Oculus. Ring. I think it's Vive. Vive. Okay. Um, and uh, they load up whatever car you're looking at. So, you know, obviously they want to use the Halo car for all the uh, various things that they're showing off. So they set it up for the R8 V10. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it lets you say, okay, well, you know, that's a nice uh, blue R8, but, you know, I want to see what it looks like in that nice uh, shiny red that you have. And then they hit a button, all of a sudden the car's red. Well, I don't like those wheels. I want this other wheel option. And then they can change... Uh, the wheel option, and you're able just to walk around the car and see what it looks like with those various options. But the interesting thing is it goes beyond just the exterior experience, or uh, exterior appearance. So, uh, you know, you get all these different options for different types of leather, uh, different, uh, you know, brushed aluminum inlays, carbon fiber inlays on the interior, all these different finite details. Well, they actually went so far as to model the entire car so that uh, you just basically move in to where your head would be in the car, and you're able to look around like you're sitting in the car. Hmm. And you can adjust all these different settings on the fly to see how uh, their virtual dashboard looks, you know, relative to whichever kind of uh, you know, 
you know, material you pick for the seats or the headliner or all that stuff. And uh, it says that you can even go in and, you know, move your head around where the engine would be and see the inner bits of the engine compartment just to see all that nightmarish work that you may have to do if, you know, you're a masochist like me and you decide to work on your own Audi. But they're going to work on loading all the different uh, vehicles in their model line, all 52 of them, with all the various options into this program so that you're able just to walk around and see what your next Audi would look like in person at mm -hmm. the dealer. I, I, we're pulling up some video. Um, I, I forget where this is from, uh, from CES apparently. And this guy is like looking at the tire and looking in the trunk and everything. And he was like crawling around on the ground <laughs> pretty significantly. Uh, I presume this is what the HTC Vive that's, uh, that's coming out. Um, but that, that that you mentioned before. Yeah, so so you see how his head's basically where the engine is, and you see the internals of the engine. I'm waiting for this guy to run right into the wall. And, that, and that's what I was going to bring up too, because with the VR goggles, this is the hardest thing to get through is the spatial relationship without being able to see through anything. I mean, he's lucky he's not. I'm surprised he's not either misjudging the floor and falling to the floor, or trying to fall through the floor. It, it's i was wondering because you look at the case that they give you and there's a device kind of in the center of, of that case with the with the headphones and the um goggles i'm surprised they don't have it where this is some kind of i can sit stationary and use a controller to move myself without actually having to get up and move around the room because mm -hmm. the other the interesting thing is is look there's a cable attached to him mm -hmm. it's like up in the <laughs> middle like it's like it's like strung to the middle of the room like as as a customer, this is this would have to be a really hard sell for me to want to do this versus just show me the darn car. And I do, and I do feel like I do feel like that's one of those like things we're working on a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it, it's an interesting problem. But um, and also that's not a final version of the vibe that they're using there at CDS, and that was like uh, about two months ago. So they're using some kind of specialized one that goes to a big, powerful computer that's not finalized hardware, not the right, you know, stuff. And I, and I don't know what I can't remember what all the hookup is for an HTC Vive, but uh, and I think that one is supposed to be a little bit more made to roam around uh, than than what you see with the Oculus, which everything I've done with the Oculus so far has been more or less a um, sit down experience. So. I don't know. It, it, that's awesome. Of course, Audi it, it, or any other car. I, I don't know if, you, if you're on audio. Uh, we I think we could mostly described kind of what's happening on the video. Uh, but there's also a part of this where you're on the moon. So uh, if you want to take your audio on the moon, there yeah, you go. pick the background where you think your car would look best and uh -huh. just roll with it. There you go. So there you go. That's on the moon. All yeah. right. Are do you know are any other car dealerships um, um, venturing into this that you're aware of? Um, not that I'm aware of, but I'm sure that, uh, you know, if anything, at least uh, the other two that make up the big three of Germany are going to follow suit, BMW and Mercedes. Mm -hmm. I think Mercedes actually has been toying around with something similar to this. Uh, I'm not sure about BMW, but I can definitely see this being the norm for those kind of, uh, for those car brands. Because, you know, it it's one thing, um, you know, to... Uh, to what Chella said about, you know, just go in and, you know, just look at the car. Yeah. Well, whenever you go into a dealer, say like a Hyundai or a Chevy dealer, where, you know, everything's basically cut and dry. There's nothing too elaborate there. Um, you know, you're going to find all of the options there. Well, you go into an Audi dealer, you know, they have leather packages that cost $7,000. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, if they aren't certain that that's going to sell, you know, you aren't going to spend the extra $8,000 just to have that cut of leather in the showroom. And the same with like the $10,000 stereo that comes in the SUV. You know, some of these options are very expensive options. So it makes sense to, you know, be able to see the really, really, you know, top cut type things. Well, it's like you you're know, not really going to get your hands on the fifteen thousand uh, dollar Apple Watch, but uh, it's nice to see what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. So, um, awesome. Uh, Chilla, what do you got? So it's WMC when or the World Mobile Congress is taking place right now as we speak, and Samsung and LG made some announcements on our Sunday. I think it was kind of their Monday, um, and Microsoft and HP had an interesting announcement. HP announced the Elite X3, 
which they're touting as a phone that's as powerful as your PC. Hmm. Um, now, what makes this interesting to me is 5.9 inch uh, screen, 20, uh, 2560 by 1440 on uh, Gorilla Glass screen, new, uh, new Qualcomm chip. It sounds probably pretty close to what the Samsung Galaxy S7 is packing. Four gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage, expandable via SD to two terabytes. Cat6 LTE, um, which is the next revision of LTE. Eight megapixel front-facing camera, 16 megapixel rear-facing dual SIM slots, decent battery, um, and about 0.43 pounds. Um, the, where, where I think it gets interesting is so then it comes with a dock. The dock has Ethernet, two USB, and what looks to be an HDMI. Um, so you could actually plug this in and use it as a computer. Um, and then they kind of take it to the next step. They have what's called the mobile extender, which has no CPU memory or storage, but it's a 12 and a half inch display and backlit keyboard with three USB-C ports um, and a micro HDMI port, along with an additional battery that'll give that'll last up to three days in standby mode. Wow! So I feel like this is the first foray into here's your phone. Now it's you can kind of use it as a PC. Right. This was being talked about on one of the other podcasts I, I listened to, and they they said the only problem is there's not much that works for this just yet. So you're going to get your full office, your full browser. Okay, so this is kind of like when when, when Surf RT was a thing, and you're like, well, you got Windows, and you got X amount of um, software with yeah, it. And what's right? in, so when I, when I think about the phone, right, I have my apps, and this is where I think their apps running in multi-mode. Mm -hmm. So like Facebook, right, I can use it on my store. Slack is a good example. Right. Slack I can use on all the devices. Right. And it's the same executable. Right. So now I fire up Slack on my phone and I dock it, and now it's running full screen on, on a full screen. This isn't something where you get this thing and say, of course I'm going to be able to do everything I do on a PC. This is, I can do a boom, boom, boom on my phone. Wouldn't it be great if that was done also as a PC? Right? See, I, just, I kind of disagree. I think this is the first step towards that continuum theory where right. anything I can do on my PC, I can do on my phone. So photo, Adobe makes a client. Okay. Now it's not going to be full blown Photoshop right Ooh. now. That doesn't mean they can't photo. Adobe can make a full blown Photoshop that would run cross platform. Mm -hmm. But um, we know they're speedy on these kinds of yeah. things. So, 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 but I, but I think this is that first, I'm starting to think like, what couldn't you do? Mm -hmm. Um, now, maybe for, I, I would think for the average user, they could, my mother could do everything that she does. Right, right. My, my Carla could do everything that she does. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't hate it, this idea of, of a Windows phone for, you know, somebody like that that only does a few, you know, internet things with, with something like this. Yeah. And, and, and where I look at it is it's, it's think, I, I think of it as going to work, right? At mm -hmm. work, I don't have anything computer. It's a it's a business setting. Um, now I could take my phone and take it into work and dock it, and I have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, a browser. I have access to our whole intro web, and then I pick up and leave, and I go home, and I still have my phone and all my other stuff on there. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think it really bridges the gap. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so, oh, I'm I'm the one that's left, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, so my awesome thing of the week, um, um, iTunes has been kind of uh, notorious for not being user friendly to podcasters, and uh, in in you know, like you don't really know what's going on with your podcast if it doesn't work. Like if it's not updating, like you have no feedback whatsoever that I'm aware of. Um, so. I got an email today, just like two hours before the podcast, actually, uh, for this podcastconnect.apple.com. And uh, finally, finally, I can see, I didn't know I had a, this many things submitted to Apple <laughs> over the years. And here is like everything, like even stuff that's not around anymore. Like remember back when we were on like Blip TV? Yeah, those are still in here, letting me know they don't work anymore. 
Like, like it, it's, it's everything. Like, it just lets me know a failed review and it's not in the store, right? And I can kind of delete it from here. But again, like, like stuff I don't know. Like, as I go through here, I'm looking through some of the shows that we have. Like, I have a feed um, that's like just kind of everything for the Wrestling Mayhem show, right? And I go through, hey, there's a connection to my feed was interrupted uh, due to a timeout error. Um, even though I know that this has been kind of updating because like, I started using the podcast app on my phone. Uh, but again, I can kind of look at this and, and even kind of go back to my host and say, hey, I'm getting these fees from from iTunes. What's going on over there? You know, especially if you pay for something, uh, it's really good to kind of do that, too. And on, also, if you're somebody who rolls your own podcast feed. Um, some people like use a version of WordPress to do that on their own server. I used I used an XML file. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's that's really it's, it's all it's all it is. It's a text file, right? But again, you know, kind of have to make sure everything's set correctly in order for that to work. Um, now you have somewhere to you know you have somewhere to kind of go to see okay what's going on. Uh, I, I know like a lot of these are where I'm getting kind of the errors. I notice our shows that I haven't updated in a while, like just shows that have kind of faded off. Or, or we've stopped for whatever reason. Um, but then some of them are like some pretty active ones. So I, I it, it kind of gives me a little bit to go into and, and kind of say, okay, what, what what is going on with a podcast feed like this? So hopefully this is a step in the right direction of um, podcasts getting a little more, can I say, respect on I, uh, Apple's own platform. Um, so uh, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's pretty interesting. I, I uh, Partially excitable uh for for us podcasters that we get at least like some little look into what's going on here um and uh and i got a few surprises there as well so i'm actually going to be cleaning this up and probably deleting a few of these things that are are, yeah especially the video podcast that we don't use on itunes anymore since we have youtube and facebook so uh really really curious do you think this is an answer back to google i that's what i've been considering as well like is this um you know them saying hey are are they really threatened by google in that in that regard or or you know because uh, while there's other things like stitcher and spreaker and soundcloud i really don't think anybody's really rivaled them as far as podcasting right Mm -hmm. like itunes like still is consistently for many the place right uh, where where people give them even if like I, I think if you if you pull the people that listen to the show most are not listening to, on iTunes at least like the active like people you know that give us feedback but most probably are on iTunes you mm-hmm. know and 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 as some people with Libsyn uh, stats can, you know can confirm that you know I've seen uh, big bumps on Stitcher for some as well but uh, but that's like kind of the discovery when you hear podcasts that's where people look first you know even if it's not on their phone because they have Android they go to iTunes. They're like, oh, that's where the podcasts are. Download iTunes, check it out, right? Well, I wonder how many of them actually scan the feeds from Apple. Most do. Most scrape from iTunes. That's why they say um, make sure you get the comments and everything and get bumped up on um, the charts on iTunes because everything else takes their cues basically from that. So. I was going to say most of ours are iTunes. Like the Scarehouse podcasts are all coming from iTunes. Well, a chunk of them are coming from iTunes and right. And um, the Apple technology. What is that? Um, that is an iTunes like robot or something. Okay. Like it, it's it's using like it's it's their like core technologies. Yes. So it's For media. it's kind of like. Yeah, it's kind of like a part of iTunes. I think mm-hmm. um, maybe it's like what well, it calls it on the, on the phones or something, or it could be the fetcher. Perhaps okay. so. Is it a small number or a big number? Uh, it's it's like forty six percent in an episode. Like I'll see Ooh. iTunes is at twenty five percent. Apple Core Media is at forty six percent. I think you would. I think you lump that into iTunes. It's been a while since I looked at stats like that. For for that. So, all right. Um. So uh, with that, hey, let's give a shout out to our buddies. Um. So we got a lot of people all over there on the awesome cast on the couch on the chair I'm cramming them here into the studio <laughs> so and, much fun and mike's out there hanging out how you doing so comfortable <laughs> and uh but uh you know everybody's dropping in on the dinner time so it's great that we got a great supporter of the show our buddies at slice on broadway right here um right along the tracks here in beachview well there will be tracks at least for a little bit longer um we'll see how that goes uh but no check them out sliceonbroadway.com they're supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for uh, almost two years now uh hooking us up with a uh, awesome large pepperoni pizza for for uh, everybody that comes in here and, uh, and it gets us more people in studio you know uh frank's back in here checking out you know and and, 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 and snagging some right right frank oh yeah 
definitely. <laughs> so check them out. They're also in Carnegie PA down on Main Street. And uh, and, and say hi to Rico and the guys. Um, tell them that uh, uh, awesome cast wrestling man show, Sorgatron Media, sent you. And uh, and they'll they'll don't know who you're talking about. Uh, so check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters. And uh, look up Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagrams. Okay. So we got a... Uh, where are we at with things? Uh, so we had a... a a couple interesting uh, uh, items in here. First of all, I want to touch on Fuzzy's uh, tip of the week that he wanted to share. <laughs> what What's going on here? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes, you know, not necessarily tech related um, because there's not really a sensor there because this is something that typically doesn't come up. But just a little public service announcement for everyone. If you're going to go driving out of state, Make sure you have your brakes firmly attached to the vehicle <laughs> what? so that your caliper doesn't almost come off while you're going on the highway. Because that makes some weird noises. <laughs> <laughs> Check your brakes. This has been a public service announcement from Fuzzy. Check yep. your brakes. All right. Make and- sure good thing. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Um, and, and so uh, I have an app of the week. This is going to be my, my awesome thing of the week until I saw the iTunes thing. But have you guys heard of Poncho? No. Poncho is a weather app because we need another weather app, yes. right? Um, but these guys are a little more fun. Uh, they uh, So I mostly get text messages from these guys, but they have some pretty fantastic emails. Uh, Katie, I I've, I've forwarded a couple of these to you, I mm-hmm. believe, because they're very GIF heavy. <laughs> um, and it's, a, it's kind of a... <laughs> As it says on the website here, it's it's classified. It's a, a chipper and sassy, according to one of their their reviews. Um, but no, it, it's tailored weather for uh, where you're traveling every day, and and you can kind of set it up for when you want a weather update. So I have a weather update that pops up at uh, you know on my text messaging about uh, I think about uh, seven. Thir- I actually have to adjust it since my day is kind of adjusted, like seven thirty in the morning, and then like four o'clock in the afternoon, right? So you kind of have an idea of what the day is going to be, right? Um, but again, it, it's you know, say very gif. Uh, heavy there's a there's a little bit of a, a subway humor going on there uh, i can't promise your commute won't suck but forewarned is for forearmed you know stuff like that um and actually i can kind of give you some examples here from my text messages um but but it's a it's a fun thing and uh and like i said they kind of start as the kind of text and email api but they do have their own app it is on um you can add it to slack guys whoa whoa oh no wait a minute wait a minute now, I have to be reminded which Slack feeds are professional and which ones allow <laughs> <Come> on. gifts. <laughs> we have rules. We have rules. The general and the mostly the random are allowed gifts. Uh-huh. That's the point of why we use Slack, so we can separate these things and talk business, Katie, in the business feeds. I don't like you to force me to adult. <laughs> in, the, in the adult feeds, in the podcasting, and... <laughs> Uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's it, it, it's it's tons of fun on here. Um, uh, for instance, uh, I mean they're they're really horrible and punny, to be quite honest. Um, um, now that we filled out the Mad Libs, I'll read it. Tonight's temps are in the low 40s with clouds. Wait, this is just the weather. Um, that's kind of the the idea of uh, I cream the I cream this weather in a dragway, so I own its clouds and high 30s temps now. You know. It, it, it's something different right for you to read and and, and of course it's coming to my text so it pops up like in the corner on my on my mac as i'm working uh in the afternoon and it kind of gives me a little you know kind of takes me out of things for a moment and uh, and it's kind of a nice moment there um so check it out poncho.is and uh, look for that app on uh, on itunes and it might be i think it's just on itunes right now keep a look out for it on um on uh, uh, uh android as well so um Chilla, I, I, I wonder if you, do you check this? Actually, I think I might have uh, included you on this when our friends from Does This Hold Up uh, podcast uh, hit us up earlier this week. Um, the next bit, Robin, is an interesting cloud based smartphone. I, I wonder, missed this one. You missed this one? I um, missed this one. <laughs> it's, um, so the whole idea is, you know, instead of like just jamming a ton of stuff onto your phone and having, you know, 128 gigabytes like we do with iPhones and stuff is uh, as you go, it will um, actually add and delete apps on the fly. So it's like Google Photos for apps. It is. It is. Or or I think about it like how the new um, Pebble works because you see all the apps that you have installed 
on the Pebble app, and it kind of loads them as you say, I want to load this app, right? Um, that's kind of the feeling as, as I kind of looked at it. Also, it's fantastically pastel colored. Uh, so um, it, 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 it's, it's very boxy. It's very different. It's, um, but uh, again, in functionality, I think it's, it's kind of an interesting idea. I mean, granted, you're not getting this if you don't have a pretty nice data plan or see yourself on uh, Wi-Fi a lot. And I'm sure there's settings in there, but it's more or less Android you know, again, a very kind of light looking, nice, uh, uh, soft version of Android from the looks of things as well. Um, and, and so you can kind of on the fly um, archive apps, bring them, bring them onto the, the phone as well. Um, and I think it also does pretty much with the, with the media as well. Uh, so I don't know. It, it's an interesting idea if it works. And then that's the big question. Does, does it work really effectively? And, and I just don't, I don't see this big for like a heavy user like you or I, Chilla. Yeah, and and see so where, where I would like to see this. And I think it would this start at three ninety nine or something. Mm-hmm. Drop this to a buck ninety nine and make it Wi-Fi only. And I will put three of these in my house. <laughs> there you go. Like that's where, the, so to your point where I, I'm not going to use this on a data plan because I'm not going to chew through data left and right to load, load, unload and reload apps. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would do that at my house. Mm-hmm. Um, especially for like Christopher or for a guest or, or something along those lines. Cause we we're, we're, our house is app driven so uh, that's where i think this would definitely come in handy i love that that's that's a statement that you can say my my house is app driven jeez uh, <laughs> welcome to the 21st century yeah well, well I, I think i think chill is about a century and ahead I of the actually, rest of us I actually, actually like the look of this phone mm-hmm. i mean i don't know if i want the 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 Malibu mint green version, <laughs> <laughs> but I that would, goes for your Malibu uh, smart house. I, I would definitely like to see it in kind of like a deep red crimson mm-hmm. or, or something like that. But it, 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 it the phone looks nice. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah, it is a little boxy. It reminds me of one of the new Nokia's. But again, I think that's a, if it goes, it goes, you know, if it, you know, whatever you're kind of. And it's got covers. Like it's not. I think it, is it only blue, and then it com- comes with covers because we see this over on the side as well. Like again, more kind of pastel colors added on here. So, um, but I, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, I, I'm curious. Like I could see like an Apple trying to do this. What's the thing on the back? What's the thing on the back? I haven't seen. So it. there's go. I have to bring it back. Sorry. But it's the quarter of the way down the page. There's a picture of the back of the phone with a camera and a flash. And then there's a cloud with four dots. There's a cloud with four dots. That, that is an indicator um, that they were showing uh, about you know, how, I think it's for, for how synced it is as well. Um, there is, or is that the touch? Is that the touch system right there? Or how much of the cloud is in use? Because yes. you get 100 gig on the cloud. Yeah, well, the row of LED lights on the back of the phone are used only when the phone is backing up or restoring information to the cloud. Uh, you almost see them never. You almost never see them illuminated because the phone is often face up on or in your hand or on the desk. Uh, so there, there's kind of a weird, weird thing. What What I find interesting about this though is, so I'm looking at I'm looking at the smart storage picture, mm-hmm. and it has 100 gig of cloud storage, but then local is almost 25 gig. Right. Well, when I think about everyone's phones now, I mean, a lot of people are still running 16 gig phones right so it's pretty significant right so i mean even the phone by itself is pretty and that's probably like a 32 gig phone honestly right and after operating system and and whatever else they put on there because there's probably a lot more software to make this work basically uh in this fashion so i don't know it i really this this added more questions than anything else but it's an (laughs) interesting concept it's something it's it's a different android phone right Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's one of the cool things about android is they can they can throw something like this it's like an android terminal (laughs) <laughs> exactly exactly mike uh, uh, actually mike what are you um uh phone wise what are you rocking over there uh i'm rocking a zte uh 3g uh let's say a prepaid phone mm-hmm. like uh, I, I go on the cheap like not uh, type of thing like and i just uh, i believe it's a uh, no, go through the track phone mm-hmm. uh, type services like uh, what what do you think of this uh next bit robin you think it's kind of uh, uh could solve some 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 space issues phone wise if it was uh, it was on the level for yeah you? yeah it would certainly an upgrade from what i have right now mm-hmm. but uh I would certainly be concerned about uh, whether or not, like, I really want to do something with uh, cloud technology. Like, I, 
I when I hear cloud, I kind of consider it. Uh, be some, well, I wouldn't say negative like that, but I'd have have some reservations because it's got a stigma attached. Because I remember back in the day when all the celebrities got their uh, stuff exposed, uh, mm-hmm. uh, and the, the cloud was hacked and stuff like that. Uh, I, is this going to be like you know just how much security uh, will this uh, will everybody? Yeah, you know, I have a chance to see what you know my apps or what I'm looking through my apps and stuff like that, or what kind of uh, technology I have on my phone. That'll be interesting and, to see. Uh, how much backup uh, uh, do I want to put up to the uh, cloud through this phone? <laughs> it's 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 one it's one more number to manage, right? <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Fuzzy. Uh, we you know Fuzzy has not been on the show for a good long time. And back when he was a little more regularly on the show, we always had to have something from the fancy.com fancy.com. And I remember <laughs> there was always the most ridiculous stuff imaginable that you're never going to afford and probably don't, doesn't work that well to be quite honest. But um, it but, exists. but this is stuff that exists. That's the qualifier. Uh, uh, Frank, what, what the hell do you have for us this week? Oh, I have cold feet, honestly. Been, well, okay, like, okay. You know, you know, you were like, hey, do you want to come to the studio and, uh, you know, be on all kinds of... I'm like, well, you know, I've never been to the studio before, and I kind of got cold feet. You've never been it. here so, before? No. What? This is my first time in studio. What? Look you you didn't realize you that. <laughs> and he's never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I kind of have cold feet about this. You know, I need to solve this. So... You know, I fire up the fancy search machine and I come across <laughs> the Sensoria Smart Socks. There has to be a solution to this. Take me to the fancy. <laughs> For $200, <laughs> the low, low price of $200, you can get a pair of socks. And for those of you who are like me, you can get them up to a size 15. Oh, good. Uh, now, oh, good. Now, what do your $200 Smart Socks get you? Well, they're heated. So at the touch of your phone, through a Bluetooth connection to your socks, your feet can become nice and toasty. Now. (laughs) And if you sweat enough, you might electrocute yourself. (laughs) Now, for those of you who, you know, like to go out and exercise, Mm -hmm. uh, it, from the site, uh, they deliver superior accuracy in step counting, speed, calories, altitude, and distance tracking. But they go well beyond that to track cadence, foot landing techniques as well. So, you know, if if you're kind of heavy on your heel or heavy on the ball of your foot, mm-hmm. your app will tell you as it communicates oh, with your smart Oh, that's handy. That's so, a little quantified self there. That's great. Now, Isn't that what the Dr. Scholl's thing the, does at CVS? Take your info. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. But not while you walk. Not while you not walk. Not while you walk. Okay. That's only resting. So, while this may seem a little silly for some people, nah. Think about someone who runs a marathon who wants to, you know, make sure they have the right, uh, you know, uh, foot landing position. This Wait. could actually be something. So that work they on your do. form, okay? And hey, oh, they're quasi. It's only a little bit of extra plastic on there, I guess. <laughs> what, what shoes is he wearing? Because I actually like his shoes. Yeah, so do I. I, I, I need <laughs> Forget to figure that socks. out. <laughs> Forget the <laughs> socks. How about those shoes? Nice shoes, sir. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, that's fantastic. You know, I counter you. I counter you, good sir. I counter you with some other amazing sock technology that I encountered in the wild yesterday. Um, have you heard of Slack Socks? I have not. <laughs> Slack I saw your picture. Socks, yes. Uh, our friends Dr. Matt Keener, who was on the show and actually featured on Awesome Chat this week, uh, and Kit Mueller of uh, of um, of the uh, great Unstuck Pittsburgh and uh, Startup Drinks happening this week. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they're uh, socks in the colors, in the Argyle colors of Slack, if you're into Slack. And and then and then Katie, I know you discovered more of the actual Slack store, right? Stickers. <laughs> there's stickers, there's everything. Slack is a freaking phenomenon right now Where's and a culture. I want stickers. It's online. Yeah, go it's in your computer. Look for the, <laughs> it's in your computer. Go to the Slack shop, go good in, sir. And, go into uh, this machine. Yeah, because today was a very sad day for me at work. They blocked Slack. At work. No! no! Why? Yeah, so, so Don't now, they like getting work done? Well, we don't use Slack. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay, so so they're tired of everybody um, doing their startup. Well, I'm, I'm guessing what, what probably happened was is that we pay for like the service that 
gives us all the chat and hosted services and we wait, 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 all so those kind of things. So Slack hadn't shown up in, in one of those lists. Okay. And I'm guessing when we got our updated feed, yeah, it is now in the list of social media and instant messaging that we weren't allowed to connect to. Oh. Oh, so poor, I have to tether to my phone. Pour one out to Slack. <laughs> so, so that's why you've been you haven't been quite on the on the Slack uh, yeah, for the show. I've been as trying much to use lately. our Wi-Fi more. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm gonna have to kick it back over. Kick it, kick it. LTE. There's always where you you can't stop cell phones. Well, okay, you can, especially if your office is in Allentown. Um, but you know, uh, otherwise, no, you can't stop that. You can't stop that. But that's awesome. Um, Oh, that's enough of slack socks. Uh, let's get to some of the stories that we have for this week. Oh, we have so much going on. Oh, what? Um, what, let's take a look at this. Uh, uh Mike, uh, Sony's making phones again. I thought they were getting out of that business. Uh, yeah, yeah. Apparently, they want to uh, start, uh, uh, you know, building the more uh, Xperia X phones. Mm-hmm. Like that. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, you bring over the story here that uh, they want to uh, uh, show off in uh, like in June, uh, the I, don't know, I guess of last year, they showed off the Xperia Z 4V, which uh, customized specifically for the uh, U.S.'s uh, largest carrier, but delayed the phone for so long that Sony released the next gen- generation Xperia Z5 internationally before it came out. Verizon uh, scrapped the uh, the generation old Xperia. Uh, Z uh, 4 V uh, even before it was released though, uh, and in February Sony quietly released it on the uh, uh, Xperia uh, Z five and uh, through the U S through Amazon uh, several months before it uh, debuted elsewhere. Awesome, and uh, you know, and they were always interesting looking phones. They looked really cool in the Amazing Spider Man movies, um, which he for some reason used, yeah. uh, of course. Yeah, but- yeah, they want to, uh, I guess, target uh, a lot of people that uh, are heavy users of uh, online, you know, video content and stuff like that, and make it, uh, uh, I guess, compatible with all of their other, uh, you know, media sources like that. And if you're you know, doing the uh, apps and uploads and watching stuff like uh, this show uh, on uh, YouTube and uh, stuff like that, so they, they want to uh, uh, aim for the uh, uh, video consumer heavy content. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll get PlayStation phones again. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are kind of weird. Um, Chilla, have you ever encountered a Sony phone? That looks as no. That's the uh, in Best Buy. In Best Buy, <laughs> like, it, there's like not a lot had, in the wild. I guess that was a problem. They had they had a they had a handful of devices that they used to sell in Best Buy. I don't I don't remember seeing mm-hmm. many. I have a Sony. I actually have a Sony cell phone prior to smartphones that was based off the sony ericsson and it was like a walkman type phone yeah I remember and it was those. an mp3 player and yep. the coolest yep. thing i thought about their phone was the back of it actually it was a 3.2 megapixel digital camera as well and the back of back it looked, when that back when that wasn't normal back when back when like 3.2 megapixel was like the cat's meow of digital cameras and the back of the phone actually looked like a camera i'll have to bring it i'll bring it into the show next week um you know what i had i had the sony trio yeah the trio okay the trio yeah that this was, would have been a little bit before that we, was the it, worst phone i've ever owned <laughs> was it the, the 700 w wait it was the fanciest of the trio so they had there was a 700 w which ran mm-hmm. windows and there was a 700 something the trio was actually ran. we had a a mobile flash class in my bachelor's program oh wow yeah and we made it a flash app to to run on you know PDAs and they had uh, the teacher she had a Sony Trio and that's what we tested it on and that was that was the project of the entire class <laughs> was to get something to work on the Trio <laughs> with um, probably not even Adobe Flash it was probably Macromedia still back then um, it was like two thousand three four ish three ish probably uh, so yeah that's my experience <laughs> so, they, they always made really nice devices they were just always always very that, interesting devices yeah, yeah. They right were always very expensive yeah 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 well it, it was uh, that was sony like you gotta think back then uh i'm like i don't know if this is your impression uh of of, of uh, uh sony back then but like sony tvs were like the tv right like sony was like the brand you trust right 
the Bravia line. The Bravia I had, line. I had, yeah. Two, yeah. I had a 32 inch and a 36 inch. Vios were always nice, Bravia. nice computers until you had to work on them. Because they they were always did weird stuff what in did, between, like their, inside. What was their memory? The Sony stick. Oh, that's uh, this. Uh, you know how many? Okay, so every Sony camera I have has the memory stick duo thing, and yes. everybody's nodding over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like, "I'm never using this. I'm, I'm yeah. absolutely yep. never using this thing." Like even like the prosumer, the three thousand dollar three chip prosumer camera, I believe has a memory stick like the really nicer higher end one, but mm-hmm. it's still like that memory stick duo that you're. Never gonna use, right? Unless you buy all Sony unless, all the time. Unless you buy all Sony all the time. Did the Game right? Gears have memory sticks too? Game Gear? You the, mean like the PSPs? The PSP the had PSP the, did. Yeah. No, this I'm talking like the Sony the uh, the one before or no? What was no Game Gear was not was uh, Game Gear was Sega. Sega. That's right. Sorry. You're thinking the PlayStation Portable? Yes, the yeah, the PSP. Yeah. Correct. So they yeah. had a couple different. Versions yeah, that of one it. had the thing too. And I don't think like they were the like, games were on it, but like instead of like a memory card, that's what you yes. used. What was so. there? I remember. Now we're we're going down a Sony like rat like the hole. Thing now. After the Walkman, <laughs> so they had like the Walkman, and then they had some kind of digital. Hold on. Like it was a digital media card slash disc type thing. You mean this thing? Hold on. It was like a replacement for like CDs. Oh. Oh yeah. Wow. Did they get this from you? No, that didn't come from me. Where did this come from? <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. There. You know. There's. There's all kinds of of old dead tech in here in the studio. I don't know if you can see this here, Michael. But uh, this is a mini disc player. Yes. I've never oh, used yeah. it. Yeah. I've never I like used those. Uh, I still have all my uh, demos uh, when I worked in radio up in uh, State College, PA. I got like all my uh, stuff on that. So wait, did it? So did they use these in the in the radio station? Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, replaced all the different carts and stuff like that. Uh, and that's how you digitally record things. Buddy, like buddy of mine had a deck a deck unit yeah. in his room in the college. So he had a deck deck unit like we would have tape decks. Yeah. He had a deck unit like that. He had a deck unit in his car. And then he had a portable player like you have right there. So like his entire world was on those. Hey, okay. Things. For for audio for audio. Uh, <laughs> since I'm just kind of flashing this around, we're talking about it. So it's a little square player. I don't know what do you say. That's the size of. Um, I mean it's the. Hold on. Hold, let me hold it up to my five yeah. S. <laughs> it's uh, it's a little thicker, but about half the height of a of an iPhone five S. I guess you can say. A little thicker. Kind of, it's little, like three it, times. It, it looks like. <laughs> well, I meant width. Like, uh, mine. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and what you had to these little discs, they look like just like if you actually if you get like mini. CDs and DVDs. It actually, it's, it is just a mini it's a, CD. It's a it's a I three believe. and a half floppy. But when you pull back the panel <laughs> instead of magnetic, it's a, it's a it's CD. A, it's a rewritable CD. It's a, it, it, is this really like legit? Is this like CD technology in this thing? It's not something like proprietary. Not that I'm That's, aware of. That, that we're aware it was of. just protected. It was just protected inside. But, of a but again, this little case. thing. This is this is a mini CD as opposed to a CD CD, and it says it's eighty minutes. Although I bet it's so it's actually probably dual sided. So. It is, it, 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 you know, so instead of being half of what a CD is. It's double density. It's, it's double dense. No, it's, it's, <laughs> no, it just, you flip it. Like, because I'm pretty sure no, you, you don't, the, I don't think you have you to don't flip, flip it. it. No, you don't, you don't, you don't flip it. There's no A and B side. There's no A and B side. <laughs> I'm all, I'm all about the B sides. Come on, man. Um, and you pour it in and I don't know. Uh, it, do I put it in this way? 200 years from now, the Internet Archive, someone's going to be listening to this episode being like, what are they talking about? How do you insert? Oh, insert this side. Okay, let's see where this goes. Okay, wow. and there you go. And boom, and that's it. Um, you know, No, I've never, I've honestly, I wonder if this battery's still in here. That'd be really horrible. I don't even know how but long you I've used had to this. Be, like, they used to give you a microphone that you could plug into those. I mean, Somebody gave me some double A's. <laughs> Sure, hold on. I think, yeah, it, takes, hang, hang I on. think it takes. Wait, wait, wait! I got a double A over here. I, don't, I have no idea if it's charged, but, uh, but yeah, it's a, you completely you rock that there, and then you put that there. I've never tried turn it. I've, I've legit never turned this on. So there's an open button. Where's the power button? This is exciting podcasting <laughs> you speak to right it. here. You just say on. On. <laughs> you never know. You never know. That could have worked. Seriously, where's the power button? Is, you, it, is it on the front where the play button? Try and stuff by the aren't? power of Grayskull. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> Don't tempt me at all. Um, no, this is Chilla. You want to play with this uh, a little bit? Yeah, sure. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, go ahead and move on to another story, and you can report to us back at the end of the show on how that worked out. <laughs> okay, what else is happening in the world of technology? <laughs> Nothing um, what nothing, what's <laughs> nothing that? Nothing as good as that, probably. 
Well, I was excited about the uh, USS Enterprise drone. Uh, we've had the Millennium Falcon one for a while, but uh, but uh, uh, I want the Millennium. I want somebody out there has to do a Millennium Falcon drone versus the Enterprise drone, like video, like a battle drone kind of thing. Um, and it's uh, you know much like like a, I think the Millennium Falcon one has like like kind of four propellers like embedded in the form of the Millennium Falcon. Uh, oh. This one is like basically your propeller is the saucer, or they're they're in the saucer, I guess. So uh, looks look it'd be kind of cool there. Can a uh, Millennium Falcon do the uh, Kessel Run uh, scaled down? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a great question. Uh, but of course, you know, there's a lot of stuff from the Toy Fair. I mean, you know, we had the uh, the the 3D printer and everything last week, um, and I think this came out of that this is going to be coming out uh, for the Star Trek's 50th anniversary this fall. Jeez, I remember the 25th and when they had that that PC game that was uh, floating around here. Uh, so there you go. Drone technology, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're, they're still working on the mini disc. Is it? I, don't, I honestly don't know what the battery is. Yeah, I don't know what that battery is. But did you find like what something that resembles a power button on that thing? I don't think it needs one. Yeah. It doesn't need a power button. Like it should be on. Right no, now? I think it like because it just has the play button. Yeah. Hold on, I got another. I got another battery right Ooh, here. Okay. I got oh, a yeah. whole box here. of batteries over here. here. Oh gosh, this is gonna end up terrible. I'm sure this will be fine. <laughs> Just oh, batteries. you crack the retina display. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, in other news, uh, virtual reality. Um, oh, so, buttons, buttons. Things are happening. Oh, things are happening now. Things are lightning, lighting up. We're going to see if they, that thing works afterwards. Like, I don't even know what's on that CD or that mini disc. Like, it could be you anything. We need headphones. We, we do need headphones. Um, so, do you have any headphones lying around here? Do you have any headphones? <laughs> I don't know. It's a studio, I guess. So no, I'll have some in, in a second here. Uh, Mike, why don't, why don't you tell us uh, one of your other stories that you wanted to, that you that you selected here? All right. All right so, uh, have you guys heard of uh, uh, Zenefits? Uh, no, I uh, haven't. No, like okay. Well, it's this, uh, I guess, uh, dot com startup. Like that. It's uh, uh, I, I I didn't know it either. Like that. So until I saw the story, and uh, supposedly uh, there is some kind of uh, HR software that uh, gives you a place to manage all your like human resource needs, like you know payroll benefits and blah blah blah. Okay. Uh, so apparently uh, they're in big trouble, uh, and uh, apparently. Uh, it's supposedly worth uh, 4.5 billion, but they uh, had to uh, come out and explain uh, that uh, their uh, employees are so uh, they've created this so real lax community out there. This workplace is so lax that uh, they had to remind everybody: please don't have sex on company time. Please, no more drinking, no excessive drinking on company time. Oh, wow. Um, to, be, uh, to be fair, if, if, if there are pictures of them dressed as bananas here, um, so yeah, like that it. gives you an idea. So it, I guess. Yeah, it's a, uh, I guess, a real, uh, you know, like it's a you know, modern, I guess, uh, type of uh, you know, workplace arena and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. uh, they uh, made you know, a lot of money here. Like I, they seem to be doing really well for themselves, but uh, uh, there's like they've had to. According to the article, like it says that they had to send out a memo, and like and they had to uh, you know, parse uh, what was uh, appropriate versus inappropriate drinking at the office and stuff like that. I've I known a couple people I, I here in the Pittsburgh area that uh, like I was shocked when they told me that uh, they they, were, they had like a, a relaxed uh, Fridays when they you know, like had like some kind of beer cooler and like that, and every once in a while for lunch they can you know go grab a beer uh, and stuff like that. they were in they were uh, drafters and they were. Uh, um, uh, different uh, uh, type of um, engineering uh, engineering firms and stuff like that. But uh, mm -hmm. when I, you know, I saw this story, like and it was uh, you know these uh, guys out there that was uh, just uh, really really uh, having a good time out there. Apparently, <laughs> well, it is kind of a different world. It is that kind of like cultural um idea of what a startup is right like the ball pits and and, and nets and i know uh google pittsburgh is is actually kind of an interesting place too you know and, and i think you know any of these startups like they want to emulate that like they want they're like oh this is how we do culture guys and they get that big check you know from from virtual plus ever 
what okay they're going through um um apparently the the mini disc is working so i'm kind of curious what's happening right now but uh but we'll get to that in a moment um um I, you know that, that that's a big issue and and then and, and i can see how this can kind of get away from them uh so <laughs> what it's is like a two it's what? like someone recorded a podcast that's like a tutorial of all of the pros, cons, and benefits of the Sony Mini Disc. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I'm like a cassette tape. You is have it to like, mark your place? It's. <laughs> you're telling me there's like a. Oh part. yeah, it's track two. I think it's John Carmen. I feel so old now. <laughs> like back in the day, like that that, that was uh, you know top of the line quality you know, broadcasting. Um, uh, things like i used to take stuff like that to uh high schools and uh, all then get the sound like and then just digitally upload it to uh radio and stuff like it would you know the mini disc was such a big help to me uh back in the day wow you know how long I, that must be who i got it from was john carmen then um well what's funny because it goes from track to track so like the next track on the disc was like hello hello <laughs> testing hello <laughs> and that's it oh wow um okay sorry you look back to this um but uh no no really interesting that you know i i, I was telling you guys before and i thought that was interesting the first time i was offered beer at a workplace right um working for a client and uh and to see that they've gone this far is, is, is really interesting so i was excited when i saw somebody with a double dragon machine when i walked into a real estate company uh, a couple of weeks ago you kitty knows what i'm talking about uh but hey there you go you still gotta work guys no sex in the office there's a rules for, so not only are we establishing our slack rules katie um i just want to make no, no sex no sex on the slack <laughs> no gifts and no sex no gifts no sex gifts on the slack please let's wait, keep wait, it no. all business on there let's keep it all business, business you just started something <laughs> oh no we're gonna make a channel for that yep. oh no heading over to general right naughty now. <laughs> hashtag naughty stuff um okay on that note um sex gifts. So are you gonna what do you think of the 360 what? I'm surprised you didn't talk about the 360. Because so, I haven't gotten to it. <laughs> the I've, been, I've been distracted by sex in the office and, and, and mini disc players. How am I supposed <laughs> to talk about virtual reality cameras at this at this stage? What's going on with the 360 real quick, Chilla? So we when we talked about this, I think I threw this in as the awesome thing of the week mm -hmm. um, a couple weeks ago. But Samsung came forward with the actual device and, and announced it at WMC. Um, it's the 360 camera. It kind of looks like a sphere, and it has a front and rear camera. Mm -hmm. um, they're claiming 360 degrees of capture um, in high resolution. It can do stills, and it can do video. Um, it has a removable battery. It can go on a micro SD card, um, and everything can be stitched right from a Samsung Galaxy uh, smartphone the cool thing that i thought was is it's not limited to the s7 line it goes back to the six the s6 s6 edge edge plus Note and 5. not only that you can actually stitch it together with soft pc software yes. at least it's limited to the pc but you know, like you are not you know not i bet you they go to the mac too because they they ta always talk about side sync being for the pc yeah and but it's funny because when you go to the side sync software download, which is the most amazing piece of software I've seen for Samsung, mm -hmm. um, it says download for your Mac PC. What? So like yeah, like they just everything's a PC. It just it depends if it runs Mac OS or Windows. Hmm. So so you may see this come out for the Mac pretty quickly. And this isn't the only option, of, of course. Like I think it's going to be one of the spiffier ones, and of course, something else is going to sell them uh, some some Samsungs, and of course, it's going to you know be built in for your Gear VR and all that kind of stuff. What they're kind of building there, uh, but there are plenty of options. I actually found a uh, over on Product Hunt, uh, ProductHunt.com. There's a lot of cool stuff there. Which, by the way, I think I was told. Uh, I think Kit told me, Kit Mueller told me that the Slack socks were found on Product Hunt. So there you go. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a giant list over there if you want to check out other 360 video capture devices. Um, a lot of options. Um, so, 
and of course HTC Vives, uh, uh, Vives VR that we were showing, seeing with the the uh, Acura. Um, no, Acura, no. Uh, Audi. 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 I'm sorry. Wow. Uh, is going to be priced at seven ninety nine. I believe pre orders start on the 29th, and they're going to ship in April, which is I think a long. The they're still listening to the mini desk, aren't they? No, no. Um, no. You didn't say no sex in the Google Drive. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Look at the dock. No, uh, oh, I'm afraid to. So not exposing that on the air. Got it. That's uh, but no, so that's coming up. So virtual reality, guys, is almost here. It's got two games with it. <laughs> and uh, uh, then there's the Mark Zuckerberg uh, snuck up on everybody with VR headsets on. Did you guys see this? Yeah, I, I did. Um, like at the, my first, I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I saw a photograph like that. And I, the instant I saw it, I recalled the... Uh, old uh, Super Bowl 1985 ad <laughs> like at, where you know, everybody was all just you know, kind of agape at whatever theater that they were watching like and it was just uh, Zuckerberg standing in this field of just people uh, everyone wearing these uh, you, know, you know VR helmets and stuff like that it was just uh, really, really. Uh, yeah, it's really creepy. This article uh, uh, from The Verge, the, this image of Mark Zuckerberg says so much about our future. That guy, that guy sitting right there. Hey, man, Mark Zuckerberg just walked right past you and didn't even know it. Um, but no, they, they had everybody put on, I guess these are Gear VRs, and they had all the press, a giant room of press, put on all these. Uh, and they watched kind of an in sync presentation, and then they just took them off, and there's Mark hanging out on stage at the Samsung <laughs> press event. So, surprise! We got a mark. Surprise mark. Um, so, there you go. There's a lot of other stuff. Um, of, of course, I know uh, I know. Sheep is in the chat room saying we didn't talk about the LG G5. What's going on on the LG G5? Chilla, real quick. Uh, hey, do you know? Do, is that not so on that's, your... That's a modular... I, I heard that's a modular device where you're actually going to be able to do... Like different cameras, different batteries, different equipment. Remember we reviewed Project Aura, Aria. Yeah, yeah, Google? yeah. So it's like kind of that, a version of that. Of, of that. Okay. Um, I didn't look as heavily at that because Samsung and Microsoft to me overshadowed them. You got to do now. something like like to just be like there's like a, a special edition of Daily Tech News show I, I had missed apparently from the day before where they just went down all the news from the Mobile World Congress. It's just like here's a phone and specs, here's a phone and specs, here's a phone and specs. And I, I like I'm presuming I didn't I didn't listen to it. I'm just like you know what? Let me know all the fun other stuff like this, like the Windows thing you talked about, like the three the 360 cameras that are coming, like the VR stuff because that's mobility now. It really mm -hmm. is. We've moved from this interesting spot where we went from computers and wanting to know what a gigahertz was to what can this device in my pocket do and then now we're that's the kind of stuff we're talking about so he said that there's also two cameras in the back and the friends package in quotes and there's a magic slot oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're not allowed to use a magic slot in the office uh anyways guys uh thank you so much a lot of great stuff coming up um of course uh, uh katie we, we 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 checked out unstuck pittsburgh a great entrepreneur group uh mm -hmm. kim miller and the crew uh down there um at the uh Oh, uh, well, it's on the it's in East Liberty uh, under underneath Romo and, and Alpha Lab. I know that. Um, I can't remember the name of the place. Uh, go check that out. Meetup group. Uh, Meetup.com. Look for Unstuck Pittsburgh. Repair the world. Repair the world. Thank you very <laughs> much. Uh, great group to kind of uh, get your mind going and and get you going if you're if you're an entrepreneur uh, here in Pittsburgh. Um, also coming up, of course, uh, as I mentioned before briefly, <laughs> that's a. Uh, is that Phil Nye just saying sex? Anytime, anywhere. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Startup Pittsburgh. Startup Weekend Pittsburgh Women Edition. Sure. Uh, <laughs> is uh, coming up uh, March 18th, the weekend on March 18th. Look, uh, do a quick, uh, you can find it on the Googles. Fairly easy. Uh, speaking of women, there was an article in Next Pittsburgh today that uh, uh, Katie was mentioned in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pretty darn uh, awesome. About <laughs> women podcasting. Yay! <laughs> representing! <Thank> you. <laughs> representing Awesome Cast got mentioned. Thank you very much to our friend Kim Lyons uh, for, uh, for, for uh, actually had a great call with her about uh, women in podcasting. And uh, actually Marta, that was Marta on the Move that was on this show about a month ago uh, is a part of that article as well. And other podcasts I have not heard of. There are podcasts in Pittsburgh I've never heard of and this is so amazing. Uh, so go check that out. NextPittsburgh.com. Marta on the Move also uh, just had her 50th episode with Patrick Wilson, uh, the actor of Return to Pittsburgh. And I believe this is for the... Um, 
the the full Monty uh, uh, yes. production over at CMU, correct? Mm -hmm. Which you know so, so we might know some people that worked on certain uh, interesting details of that uh, production. Yes. So <laughs> we'll just put it dingle at bits. Dingle bits. Um, <laughs> And of course, please listen. Oh, well, did I Dumbles. finish the one thing? Oh, Matt Keener, the Blackbird Health, talking about how they're changing the health industry and trying to um, um, kind of connect the dots on on the kind of the care and customer service side. I guess you could say. Uh, great talk with him. That'll be up Thursday. Look for that. And we actually had a great brunch with him uh, yesterday as well. Um, and exploring shady side. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, River Talk. Uh, River Talk. Pits, pgh .com. Uh, about uh, 8 a.m. I'm sorry, this is a this is an old thing in here. This is when I was on the show. Uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Thursdays, they replay the show right after Funny Money. Check out all the great, great, great shows on over there as well. Um, and you can check us out here. To, oh, chill. Anything else coming up? Is there really anything there was, after Mobile the, World Congress? I thought there was going to be another Microsoft announcement. And we're on, you know, and, or blah, 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 blah. Apple's going to answer back. So it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And March Shots 15. fired. Shots fired at Samsung. There you go. And we got an update. The Michael Fedor show on YouTube. <laughs> get get a plug. I was getting to you, man. I was getting to you. It's coming around. <laughs> the Michael Fedor show on YouTube. Go check out. What do you guys what are you doing over there on the on the YouTubes? Oh well I I do a whole bunch of things. It's a uh, just a variety uh, show like that. I, I pick a topic and just uh, rant about it for a little while. Uh, I just uh, filmed a new uh, intro uh, to it. My feature uh, and my uh, brother David helped me out with that. So the new season's uh, coming up uh, very soon. Awesome. Go check that out, guys. And thank you so much for one being a Patreon supporter of the show and believing in us. And thank you so much. Everybody, please go check out his show. Um, and uh, Katie Dudas at Katie. Dutters on the Twitters. Yes, I almost said at Kate Twitters on the Dutters. That's sure, weird. I want to okay. be in a. I want to be uh, a social media. Platform. Go on your podcaster and look up the Scarehouse podcast. Yes, they're yes. very exciting. Also, uh, Frank Chinoweth F Fuzzwad on the Twitters. Yeah, engineer, engineer extraordinary. You don't talk about engineering things. No, no, you talk about cars. Cars. There you yeah. go. He's your car dude. He's your car dude. Also, John Chichilla at Chilla. He's your gadget guy. I am man. Oh. Mobile. And mobility and and house and and dream house uh, digitization. Hold on. <laughs> digitization. I don't know. I, I was working on the word there. I picture, I picture this like lawnmower man, like yeah, yeah, or... pretty much, pretty much. Go check him out. And we're at live dot awesome or live dot about six thirty p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. Awesomecast.net. Big thanks to Missy at Rebellious Flaw on the Twitters. That's my wife, guys. And uh, helping with cuties. show notes and the Twitters and the chats and making sure I haven't forgotten about people over here. And I hope I did a good job of that. Thank you so much to our awesome chat room. All you guys. Like like sheep, like Tragar, who's here for the next show, Juggalo John, uh, Bobby F. J. Town, and everybody else that I may have missed in there and popped in does, and out through the whole Does this hold up? Right. Is on does there. this hold up? Was in there earlier tonight. I think they might have popped out by now. Uh, but thank you for doing a drive by on that. Uh, thank you so much to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.